We're going to talk a bit about today the background, um, like just a, a quick history of the past three years of acceleration has happened uh, in AI. Um, as you recall, in November 2022, what happened was OpenAI had released its ChatGPT, this language model that we were all so excited about. And then that sort of uh, created a, f a flurry of different kinds of language models um, that were out there, which now have become so, so much more developed. So the language model was the first part of this um, generative AI wave that was released. And then we had uh, improvements in image creation, generation, and that's become now quite perfect. You know, uh, um, so the language is at, at an amazing stage, the, the images creation is at an amaz amazing stage. We then moved to music. Now you can create your own music, also very good quality music. And just recently we started to produce great uh, videos also using these uh, models it still needs a bit of development but we're getting there probably in the next couple of months you're going to have the capability of producing amazing videos um, through these generative ai models now the big developers that recently happened um, have been in deep research where the the uh, ai can do what is called a chain of thought embedded inside it and sort of structure its thought and its work and this has allowed for the AI models to really dig deeper um, on topics and be able to come up with much more um, structured and uh, in-depth analysis, research on various topics. And this is going to be amazing when it comes to sciences and any topic that needs more, more work to, to be developed. Um, so this deep research is um, revolutionizing a lot of the uh, you know, sciences um, and it's getting developed really well and now it's become a standard in a couple of the models uh, Google came up with it first but then OpenAI did the same um, and uh, you know others have followed suite now the big breakthrough has been in the reasoning capability so this has become uh, you know in the past couple of months something that has come out from a lot of the models and the deep seek model, which you've probably heard about coming out of China, had a specialty in this as well. They they were um, everyone was surprised by their capabilities. The reasoning model is really uh, impressive because it's it goes beyond just the languages and you know the other parts, which mainly are you know predicting the next tokens in a generative um, AI process. The reasoning allows these models to work on very complicated math problems, science problems, things that need a logical approach. Um, and they're doing uh, really, really well at it. Uh, now, yesterday, I don't know if you heard, but um, Elon Musk and the X team came up with Grog3, which is the latest version. And it's also, even though they've only been working on it for a year, it has really made a huge uh, impact. Um, in, so far in the past couple of hours and what can be seen in terms of the quality, etc. So they've done a really great job. Now what you're going to see is currently a lot of these different big models um, are uh, handled independently. So you'll find, for example, OpenAI, they have the O3, then they have the um, you know, O4. There's, there's different models for um, reasoning versus and quick text, etc., and it's, it is a bit confusing in dealing with them. Most of the um, models from Anthropic, uh, Google, uh, OpenAI, and others have this problem. But what you're going to see in the next month or two, or three, in the coming short period, is there's going to be a, an alignment, and it's estimated, you know, expected that ChatGPT five will actually blend all of these together into one model, so you could tap into it with one interface and the model will be smart enough to identify what's the best version of it to use and that's going to become a standard now initially when when you know again we're, this has all happened over the past two two and a half years it's crazy how fast the progress has been and um, a lot of people were saying you know uh, the value add is in these models but now even though these huge uh, companies 
uh, from Microsoft to Google to AWS uh, and the others, OpenAI, they've raised hundreds of billions of dollars. They're all fighting and racing for the supremacy when it comes to the models themselves, the big models. But given the price of how these models um, have been, the price has been coming down, the competition for us, the average people, the average businesses, most of the rest of the world is not really in this space. Our big opportunity is in the application layer that sits on top of these models. So we have the benefit, all of us in our businesses, to tap into these large scale models, let them race over the you know, billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars that they're investing and, and see who will you get you know, uh, to a better result. And what we can do is just tap into all of the effort that they've done and build on top of it. And that's where really this opportunity uh, at the moment is. Now, we've been doing a lot of research in potential about, um, you know, where do we focus our energies? And I wanted to share some of this with you. So a very good report that came out of Menlo Ventures, which are a very good VC uh, and company in uh, Silicon Valley, um, identifying where are the customers really putting the money when it comes to generative AI? And what is their selection criteria? And you could see the two most important ones are that there's something that's easily quantifiable as a return on investment. So if I take an AI application, can it quickly provide me with value? Can I demonstrate it? And is it customizable for my organization and industry? So these are like the major criteria for companies to decide on to use AI. And I encourage you in your business to think of it that way. And at the same time, if you're providing services that are powered by AI to your customers, to also think of it in that kind of way. Because when it comes to these, like we said, these large models, the language model, the foundational models, um, they are doing everything. Uh, and they're so, you know, all knowing when it comes to uh, AI. However, the real advantage is if you can zoom in based on your experience, based on your knowledge, based on your um, uh, customer base and zoom into things and opportunities that can add value to your users or your customers quickly by using AI. And this is where you have a big advantage because you understand your customers more than anyone else. Now, we're gonna um, show you these two, uh, you know, there are many cases where these, uh, use cases where these AI have been used, code generation in, in you know, coding, it's been used a lot, but support chatbots have been a, an area that have been amazing um, to use and coaching is another area. And we've chosen these two areas to sort of suggest for everyone to start to get into the AI um, opportunity. So you've probably seen our chatbots. Um, I think a lot of you have maybe given it a free trial. Um, so these bots are very easy to set up, very easy to train, and they can be quickly deployed on you know, your sites um, uh, to, to work with your customers. Um, so they're amazing. At the moment, I mean, the bots that, you know, the basic version of the bots are not agents. And we'll talk a little bit more about the difference but they do uh, a lot of work that can be quickly useful to your end customers. The other part, this coaching part, can be set up in the same way that the, ch the support chatbots can be set up. Very easy, they could be trained on um, your methodology, your process. And you can imagine these coaching bots can shadow every job function in the organization. Every function in an organization can have its own AI coach that understands that function inside out. So as an example, um, HR in an organization can have a, a chatbot that understands all of the policies, the code of conduct, the vacation policies, the pay, uh, you know, anything to do with salaries, etc. So all of this could be easily trained and it becomes a coach for employees to tap into it for any HR questions or even for the HR teams to actually tap into if they want to get more information. Similarly, we'll show you an example of a sales bot that um, you know can act as a sales coach um, when your team is going out to the customers. Before they go out to the customers, they can practice with the sales coach on role plays, 
um, the sales coach can actually draft compelling emails uh, for the customer or they could rephrase the emails to make it more compelling so any of these job functions can have a sale uh, can have a coach aligned to your practices your methodologies and ready to go so these two areas are really the quickest way to get into um, uh, AI uh, they can be easily deployed like we said in minutes on a website um, and you know can have many many use cases and this is where it goes back to what we we're saying before is that you would know um, what use cases are most important for you and for your customers and as such you can deploy them so these are examples of some um, bots sitting on uh, you know some like the Ministry of Education uh, was using our bots for one of their challenges we also have another one on productivity um, and then you could see these like I was mentioning for each department in your organization you can have a, a coach um, that supports the employees in that space and here's an example of this you know sales coach we're going to show you live examples in a bit um, but you can see you can set up this kind of coach in minutes um, you could feed it your own product information uh, so it can be customized to your specific needs and you can help to use your you know your team can use it to um, improve their sales so these chatbots like we said no code very easy to set up uh, you've probably seen them if you haven't um, I suggest that you do try go to ai.potential.com and give it a try if you have tried it um, and are using it uh, feel free to share your feedback on the uh, uh, on the call here and if you haven't um, if you tried it but you didn't actually sign up also please share your feedback in terms of anything that you would want to see in these bots but you know we, we've over the past uh, year or so this has been our focus to try to identify what is this easiest entry point for people to get comfortable with AI and we found that these chatbots are the most useful they provide the biggest ROI they're very cost-effective to deploy very quick and it allows you to experiment and um, improve on now once you've done that well um, use the bots and you're comfortable with them you now you would be able to move to this next phase this year the special agents are in town uh, you know so we have these now um, agentic AI models so what's the difference you could think of them similar to the chatbots but in addition to just chatting back and forth they also have the opportunity of taking actions on um, the discussions uh, with with the end users um, or they will be able to go and do tasks independently so you could imagine companies of the future and the future meaning maybe by the end of this year that's how close we are um, could be running with you know one entrepreneur and then a team of agents around them that actually does different parts of the the work so there's an agent that would be able to do um, you know uh, marketing another agent that would be able to do custom service etc etc so there's a lot of um, a lot of opportunity. I'd like to give you a sneak peek to uh, a voice-based agent. So this is again now. Once we're talking about these agents, you can start to have not just um, chat-based but also voice-based. If you'd like, while we're on the call, go to ai.potential.com/support and press the the green button. You need to activate your mic on the browser and just have a quick chat between you and. Uh, our customer support voice agent let us know what you think I'll give you a minute to do that before we move on customer service is going to be a huge area that's going to be disrupted by AI agents you can imagine that every organization can have in the same way we were talking before about a chatbot that they uh, users can interact with every organization can provide the highest quality now customer server service um, with a click of a button or um, on your website you can have a section where you know the uh, users can talk to a sales re representative from your team which is actually an AI agent trained on um, you know on your products uh, can interact and recommend the right products for the customer based on the discussion that's going back and forth with them so uh, this is really a game changer 
at the moment, I mean, we're experimenting with a couple of things. Let me go back to show you some of the experiments here. So one of our clients um, is using the career uh, talk for performance management. Um, so supporting um, employees who, you know, before they go and they do their performance review, being well prepared for it, being able to identify their career path and what would be the jobs that would be or skills that they need to develop for that career path. How do they set smart goals? All aligned to the organization's uh, competencies framework, um, uh, you know, and job jobs and job profiles. Similarly, managers who are doing the, the reviews with, a, with their employees can go and talk to um, the bots and be able to uh, share, you know, pull up the performance review, analyze it, etc., with the bot. Another example is the skincare agent that basically uh, someone will go in, then take a photo of their uh, face, answer a few questions, and then the agent will do its research and recommend uh, products that are suitable for them. The fitness coach is another one uh, for fitness and well being. Um, you could load a, a photo of your uh, body uh, in sports clothes, um, answer a few questions and put your goals, and then it would recommend a fitness plan, and then you'd be able to discuss it and interact with it on the coach. And the, the example of the customer support is quite obvious, which is what I um, advise you to check. So can you let me know in um, the chat if anyone has tried it and your feedback? So that's, um, you know, that's an example of the agents. Now you can see these agents playing very various roles in um, a business's workflow. This is why I was telling you earlier that you can imagine an agent can handle, uh, or a set of agents um, can handle many, many different things in an organization. So the companies of the future will only have a few people and, um, you know, most of the actual employees will be agents. And that's actually what um, a recent PwC study has shown. Prepare to manage the digital workers. So AI agents will start to be part of the HR practice. And HR will need to uh, up the game to, to uh, be able to manage not just the humans, but also the, the agents in, uh, in the organization. Because it's going to be a combination of both humans and AI agents working hand, you know, side by side. Now, of course, many companies are not ready for this. Many uh, organizations are still struggling. Um, but this is where you have the advantage um, uh, of being a step ahead. You being on this call today and being on top of the developments and experimenting with what, how it could be used to support your business is going to be an, an amazing uh, way to stay ahead 